What we're talking about today is binary writer and binary reader. And specifically, we're talking about reading and writing integers. And a concept you have to have about reading and writing integers is a concept of a file pointer or a file cursor or a file position. And that's manipulated both automatically and you can, the programmer can manipulate it if he wants to do random access. But if you write an integer to a file, it'll automatically advance this pointer four bytes, assuming you're using an int32. Since there's four bytes in an integer, and then if you write the next uh, integer, it'll advance it another four bytes, so that the pointer will keep moving forward in the file with each write. And the methods we're looking at are uh, write, which is a method of binary writer, read int32, which is a method of binary reader, and base stream dot position, which is used to do the random positioning I was talking about, which is actually a property of both uh, binary writer and binary reader. And one side benefit of this is we're going to use a button that resets all the controls, and it does that by using uh, control dot control collection which is a level of abstraction I talked about in uh, videos uh, 117 through 119. So if I'm, it's totally confusing when you look at that, you might go back and look at those videos. And in order to look at the changes we're making to the binary file, we'll be using a hex dump utility, specifically HXD, which you can download by going to Google and typing HXD and then getting their download site and downloading it. It's totally free. And two concepts we'll be talking about when we look at this dump are little Indian and big Indian integer formats. But I'll probably explain that more when we get to it. This is the form we'll be using to look at writing and reading integers to a file. And if you look at the write all, we double click on the write all button and go to the write all event handler. You'll notice first I checked that none of the uh, text fields to write are, are empty. If they're empty, I just do a return. And then if they're all got data in it, I do a convert dot to int32 of the strings and the text fields and put them in four int variables, int uh, win int or w went one through uh, went four. And then I open a binary uh, writer object called uh, BWR. You can call this anything you want, but I'm just calling it BWR for binary writer. And I say new binary writer, and this takes a stream, so I'm doing file.create and passing the file.create a file name, which is a string constant. I just have set to a specific file name, saveints.bff for binary file forever. And if you uh, look at the writes, they don't really specify what the size of what they're writing is, but it gets it from the type of the variable. Since these are all ints, it's going to write four bytes from this address. And that's true of all four of the writes. And each time it does a write, it advances the pointer four bytes. So this will write to position zero. This will write to position four and this will write to position 8 and this will write to position 12 and then finally I do a dispose to get rid of the uh, um, object in order not to have a conflict although I think it'll probably be garbage collect when this exits no it wouldn't because uh, no yeah it would because it's a local variable So if I put in the numbers uh, 13, oops, oh, first I need to run it. Although I put it in there. I guess it put it in as a default value. And then uh, 14, and then 10, and then 13. And we do a write all with the code we just looked at and I bring up the uh, the editor. You see it spells out dead. D-E-A-D. -E and 
each one of these is four bytes. The first D is D000000. The next one is E000000. So D is uh, like 13 and, and uh, decimal. And E is 14 and decimal. A is 10 and decimal. And then D is 13 and decimal again. If you're wondering why it looks different, it's because it's hexadecimal. And I, the previous video I did to this actually talks about hexadecimal numbers. So you might replay that if you want more information on that. And if I change this to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and do a write all, and do a refresh, you know, it's the first four bytes are 1 with zeros, 2 with zeros, 3 with zeros, and 4 with zeros. And they call this format Little Indian which implies that it ends with the least significant byte but it doesn't end with the least significant byte it begins with the least significant byte it really should be little beginning and the, the little Indian in, is the opposite of big Indian and big Indian actually ends with the least significant byte and begins with the most significant byte so with Big Indian, the one would be here. The least significant byte would be at the highest byte position. And this would be all zeros here. So Big Indian is really Big Beginning. And Little Indian is really Little Beginning. So you might remember it that way. I get confused every time. They're basically characteristics of chips. Intel chips are all... Uh, Little Indian and Motorola chips are all uh, Big Indian. Well, let's get rid of this 13 I put in here. I have to go down to that property pane. I didn't even know I could do that. Live and learn. And the other thing that we could do is write specifically to a location. And the write to a specific location uses the checkboxes. So this will write to the first position, the second, the third, and the fourth. If we look at that code, we basically do a binary uh, writer once again, open a binary writer. But this time for the stream, we use file.openwrite, which is non-destructive. It leaves whatever's in there in there before it does the write. And then we check if the checkbox is checked with the check property. And if it is, we take uh, the property uh, bwr.basestream.position. And in the case of the first one, set it equal to zero time int size. And int size I got in the uh, form load. Int size is equal to the method size of and the proper the type int so this will return a 4 since the size of a regular int is 32 bits or 4 bytes so in the case of this code the first position is set to 0 time int size for the second checkbox is set to 1 time int size so that would be 1 times 4 the next checkbox would be set to 2 times int size so that would be 8 and in the fourth checkbox it would be set to 3 times int size so that would be 12 so it would when it does the write all it says is write but it knows that the position is set to that position so it writes into that position based on the base stream dot position having been set and of course I'm just doing a convert to n32 of the text box to get the value and then it's using the type to determine the size of the write. So if we run this and say we put a 255, which is an FF in, in uh, binary, in the second position, and we do a write, and then we bring up our, uh, our hex dump, 
and refresh that. You notice we still have the one we put in before and then an FF for the 255 and then the three and the four are totally undisturbed. So it does a random write based on that base stream dot position being set. If we double click on the read and go to the read event handler, <coughs> it does about the same thing. First we open a binary reader BRE as new binary reader and a file stream of file.openread with the string constant file name. And open read of course is very non-destructive too. And then I check which checkboxes are checked. And if one is checked, we take the uh, base stream dot position, this time of the binary reader, since they're identical, and set it equal to zero time uh, int size, which is four. And then we do a, a binary read int 32, which that gives us the size of the variable. We don't need to specify a variable to get the size because the int32 tells us that it's going to be four bytes. So the read uses the method to tell the size and the write does uses the file type to tell the size, which is a major difference between the two. And in a way I can see why you need that because you're reading to a variable that's over here on the left side. So it'd be tough to go back and get that size. And once again, we have one, two, and three times the size in order to create an offset that's four, eight, and 12 in order to do the read. <coughs> and once again, we do a dispose of the object at the end of the function. So if we run this and say I do a read of position two, <coughs> we get the 255 we put in and I do a read of uh, position, the fourth position, which is actually 12 in terms of the offset, we get the four I originally put in. If we do a read all, of course, we get all the values. And the last button, in a lot of ways, is the most interesting one, the clear button. If I double click on the clear and go to the uh, clear button event handler, this basically uh, does a for each loop, which has a variable of type control, which is a very high level of abstraction of uh, uh, types of controls. You can have a type of text box or check box and set a variable to that, which is a higher level of abstraction than the specific named variable. So this is like a third level of abstraction. And then I say in this dot controls, which is the collection of controls that exists within this control, this control being the form in this case. So we'll basically get all the controls on the form with this for each statement. We're going through each control in turn with this collection of controls. And then I have if statements to check that say if C is checkbox, so that the control we're looking at right now is a checkbox. I recreate a checkbox variable uh, called CKB with C as checkbox. So in a way, I, I recast the control we're looking at from a very high level of abstraction to a low level of abstraction of being a checkbox. And then I can use a method or a property that's unique to that, uh, that type. So I can say CKB.checked equals to false to clear any checkbox we come across. And in the same way, I have an if that says is C, if C is text box, I recast the uh, a variable called txt with C as text box. So this is now a, uh, what was a generic control now becomes a text box control. And I can use a text box method to clear out the value of that. So I can use a clear. Uh, which is a method of the text box. So if I run this and I say I do a 55, uh, 66, 77, and, a seven, and an 88, and do a write all, and then do a read all, so everything's filled in, and then set this checkbox and this checkbox and this checkbox, 
and this checkbox and then I do a clear it basically unsets all the checkboxes and clears all the text boxes so that's a pretty cool way of doing it using levels of abstraction I should point out Loa is level of abstraction not a Haitian voodoo god or voodoo spirit well, I hope uh, you uh, learned a lot from this video and enjoyed it and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.